Hello and welcome to the Spa Girls podcast. Each week we bring you the very best self-publishing tips, tools and resources for authors. I'm Shah Barrett. I'm Cheryl Phipps. I'm Wendy Vella. And I'm Trudy J. And this week we have a very exciting guest. We have Sarah Piper. Hey Sarah. Hey Sarah. Hey, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So we're all here, but a few of us have got lost voices and things like that. So we'll we'll uh, we'll just make sure that Cy, Cy, I'm sorry, so I was trying to include your name all in one word. Sarah um, will you know have lots of questions to answer, so the others don't have to use their poor um, sore throats. Yeah, yeah, sore throats. So <laughs> I'm going to quickly read Sarah's bio, and then we will get right into the interview. Um, and it were, we've got, actually, we've got several topics today, so I'm not even going to break it down. We're just going to go through and just talk about all the things, um, all the things. All the, so Sarah, all the things. <laughs> all the things. Um, Sarah Piper is a witchy, tarot card slinging, paranormal romance and urban fantasy author. Through her signature brew of dark magic, heart pounding suspense and steamy romance, Sarah promises a sexy supernatural escape into a world where the magic is real, the monsters are sinfully hot and the witches always get their magically ever afters. I love the way you write, Sarah. Um, <laughs> readers have <laughs> readers have dubbed her, her work super sexy, imaginative and original and off the walls good and delightfully wicked in the best ways. A quote that Sarah hopes will appear on her tombstone. <laughs> love it. Oh, yeah. um, that is a welcome. man, that is what a what a bio. I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank, cool. Welcome, welcome, Sarah. So thank let's you so just, much. That's no worries. Um, let's just get right into it and just talk about how you got into writing and self-publishing. Okay, well, I got my start on the traditional side in young adult writing. That was way back in 2009. My first YA novel came out and I got the red carpet treatment, which was amazing. It's what I always wanted. Um, it was the first book deal was two book deal. And I thought I had it made in the shade. <laughs> Little yeah. did I know. Yeah. <laughs> the, what is it? The rose fell off the vine. How does that go? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> after a little while um, it started to become clear that it was not going to be a sustainable career in traditional publishing it's, first of all it takes so long for the books to come out it's really hard to make a living that way unless you're getting massive advances um, and even though the, everybody that I worked with in publishing was wonderful and they were so passionate about books especially kids books and teen books um, it was just really difficult to get things happening. You have no control over the marketing, um, the cover, the titles, all of those things. And so um, I did six books under YA uh, contracts over the years. And then when I went to submit the seventh book, the publisher offered me half of the advance that they had been paying. Mm -hmm. And I just I had to make that decision to take it wide to other publishers. So we tried that and they all wanted it to be um, sort of a different story. And so I, I worked on it with my agent for about a year and a half until the thing became so bastardized that I didn't even <laughs> yeah. recognize it anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. And then I finally was like, you know what? I had some friends that were getting into indie. So this was around 2015 that were really doing well um, as indie authors, particularly in adult romance. And so they kind of encouraged me to, to uh, set, set aside the YA mm -hmm. and branch out. So I did. So I launched um, a contemporary romance pen name, Sylvia Pierce, in 2015. Did some billionaire stuff, some hockey romance that kind of um, mm -hmm. did pretty well, the hockey romance. But it wasn't where my heart was. I really, really, really wanted to do paranormal. So around 2018, um, I had a health scare. Everything turned out fine. But that was kind of a wake up call to really just start following my heart and figure out a way to make money doing that. So yeah. I launched the Sarah Piper pen name in 2018 with the Reverse Harem series in KU, and it just took off. And so I've been doing paranormal romance ever since. That is the longish short version. Fantastic. Wow. It's That's funny how question. life sud suddenly puts those, um, gives us yeah. those curveballs that really make us assess things, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. so yeah. definitely. Yeah. Oh wow! Okay, and and so the the um are all your books reverse harem or are they? Because I the latest one that's up on your website is is that that doesn't seem to be reverse harem. That seems more like a cozy fantasy. Is it? Yes, I pivoted a little bit. Um, okay. So I have a several. I have a few series that are reverse harem, and then I have a vampire um, series that is male female paranormal, yeah. and um, my last series was reverse harem gargoyle romance. But the one that I have a new series launching at the end of this month, October, is a paranormal witchy rom-com. 
So it's yeah. it's wow. still paranormal. It's still steamy, but it's um it's just you know it's not dark. It's funny. It's you know it, it's I call it practical magic meets Lucifer. Yeah. So it's got that kind of snarky devil hair hero. Um, lots of magic and witches and sisterhood and that kind of thing. Yeah. So that's part of that following your heart thing. Those are two of my favorite programs and yeah. I'm super excited to read it. That's, I it love sounds it. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I love the idea of mixing rom-com into kind of the the fantasy realm. I mean, it, I know it, mm-hmm. there's a lot of books that are kind yeah. of funny, but I, yeah, that's, I love it. It'd be awesome. That's awesome. So, um, so you've been um, kind of self-publishing since 2015 have you been yeah. in KU that whole time? Like, um, when did you make no. the, so you were in KU from, and with the first books of Sarah Piper in 2018, when yeah, did the so decision? I was wide with Sylvia and then KU with Sarah Piper. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. So Sylvia was wide. Okay. Um, and mm-hmm. so what was the decision to move Sarah Piper wide? How did that work for you? So um, I had been seeing a lot of authors kind of struggling with Amazon account shutdowns and all of those kind of things. And I started to get nervous about having most of my eggs in that basket. I had kept Sylvia wide during that time and it was still bringing in some income, which was great. But um, the Sarah Piper stuff was the bulk of my income. So it was a really hard decision, but I, I had already been thinking about, I didn't want to rely on Amazon. And even just as a consumer, I don't like that I rely so much on Amazon. I felt like they were taking over my life. So it was, I think, um, Ram 2021, Romance Author Mastermind 2021, when someone had spoke about just like getting so fed up, they just pulled all of their stuff and went wide. And that was kind of the impetus and and the fire Mm. that I needed under my butt to just do it. And so, but it took me some time to get organized. And so I went fully wide in, um, I think it was March, 2022. Yeah. I had started like pulling everything down and, and it just like, getting it out on all of the retailers. Um, and then, yeah, so th- it took some time, but now yeah. I'm fully wide. I have nothing left in KU. Mm. It's a lot have of work. You, have you ever, you know. Sorry, have you ever regretted yeah. that or were you quite happy with it and your income has stayed consistent? Yeah, so I haven't regretted it. Um, I was expecting a huge income drop initially, but that didn't happen. Um, it's it's interesting. I, it did drop a bit. I would say about twenty five percent monthly revenue, um, like monthly net revenue, went down about twenty five percent across the board. However, um, in KU, I was releasing four to six books a year, and now that I'm wide, uh, my last re- release was in November. So it's been almost a year that yeah. I haven't really, and my income has not significantly suffered so oh, that's that's really been, cool. yeah wow. that's been great that's and awesome. I don't spend as much on ads at all like I, I really just I used to be maybe 20 to 30 percent um, gross revenue spent on ads and that's now around 10 percent um, mm, wow. just to kind of keep it keep the income up so yeah, yeah so yeah. did you take yeah. them all out all together or did you just drip feed you know did you just do a few at a time Mm-hmm. Um, I think I had coordinated like when when some of them were rolling out of KU, but then there were mm-hmm. a few that were going to be awkwardly timed. So I just emailed KDP or did a live chat or whatever and asked them, you know, I, I use the um, this will be a confusing customer experience if mm-hmm. some of the books are in and some and they were happy to take them out. I mean, they they took them mm-hmm. out without issue. So wow. the rest of them went went wide up. So it really it took a couple of months, I think, like with the staggered mm-hmm. KU. And I had I was released really finishing up um, one of my reverse harem series. So I wanted to let the KU readers finish it in KU before I started mm-hmm. moving all of them out. Mm-hmm. So I let that one go a little longer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. How did you approach it with your readers? Did you get a lot of pushback from those KU loving readers? I actually didn't. I had sent, um, I wrote a blog post about it and I sent an email and posted in my Facebook reader group. Um, just, to, you know, I, I was pretty blunt with them. I generally don't talk about the business stuff to the readers because I want yeah. them to feel like it's my happy place to come to the reader group and talk about books and book yeah. boyfriends and yeah. But in this case, I felt like I needed to. So I explained to them some of the frustrations that authors have been having with Amazon, um, not just in KU, but Amazon in general with, you know, the um, delivery fees and uh, paying less, a a lower royalty in certain countries and all of these things that the other retailers don't do. And um, just that I was getting very frustrated. And so I wanted to start taking my books wide to offer them to more countries and to things like libraries, which is really important to me because I love libraries so much. Um, and that in order to do that, I was going to have to take them out of KU, but that I offered them a chance to join the ARC team if they wanted to get book, still get the books for free. Um, I, I said, um, you know, I would help them like 
request them from their libraries and that kind of thing. So I still had ways, and then I could do perma freeze and things like that. So I still do have ways that people can get the books for free or cheaply. Um, mm -hmm. And so I mostly, um, the responses that I got were really supportive and, and just mm -hmm. like, hey, you know, a lot of them were, we'll follow you anywhere. We don't care. We'll buy the books. A few were like, I'm on a fixed income. I can't do it, but I understand why you made this decision and I'm, I'm supporting you and I'll watch the libraries, that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I didn't yeah. get any like nasty grams, yeah. <laughs> which I Good. thought I would. Yeah. And of course, because now, now there's Kobo Plus as well, isn't there? Which is quite exactly. good. Mm -hmm. It's good, you know, much similar to K yeah. Kindle Unlimited. And but, Scribd. Yeah. Scribd yeah. also has. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, so there's other options, and yeah. I like the fact that you bring up the library, right? Like that you can actually yeah. now yeah. you can accessible through the library. So that's another way that people right. want a lower income or fixed income mm. can kind of incorporate mm -hmm. reading um, in the same way as KU. That's awesome. That's um, yeah, I think that's important for going wide too. Part of it is reader education because a lot of readers mm. just there are readers who don't know, even know you can get books outside of KU because that's mm. all they've ever known. I've yeah. gotten comments on Facebook ads like, "Well, how do I get this if it's not in KU?" Like they didn't mm. even understand you could purchase it on Amazon, let alone other retailers. Mm. So I think it's important for any author considering going wide to think about how you might want to educate readers on what the yeah. other options even are um, and, and how to get books from the library, how to get them from other retailers, how to do like the Kobo. I think they have even a free trial for the Kobo mm. Plus. They do. The month, first month is free, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah that's interesting that's good and it's and that's also that what we need as, as authors need to know about we need to know mm. how Kobo works and how the as, so we can kind of talk to our readers about them and and understand that so that's really right. cool um mm -hmm. so I've, I've just done the process of going wide and for me it's still a little bit of ongoingness actually because it's yeah. it's actually a lot <laughs> more complicated than you well I mean I don't mm -hmm. know maybe it's just me but um <laughs> Can you talk about the process that you had to go through and what's involved in going wide? And then and then yes. talk about kind of what it means to be wide and what you're doing as a wide author. Um, yeah, sure. So I went um, direct anywhere that I could. Uh, so I know you can, to simplify things, you can go through a distributor like draft to digital and they'll distribute to the retailers. But I wanted to keep the most profit that I could. So I went direct everywhere. Um, and because of Sylvia, I had already had the accounts set up to go mm -hmm. wide. So that's one piece that I didn't have to do to start from scratch. But if someone was starting from scratch, yes, you have to set accounts up at all of the retailers. Um, and then once that's in place, you can start just uploading. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of uploading, uploading the content, the covers, checking all the metadata, making sure the metadata is the same across the series. And by metadata, I mean things like uh, the series title, the series numbers should be consistent, all of that stuff so that series links up on the retailers the right way. Um, then getting all of the links and if there's affiliate programs, which Google, Apple and Kobo, and I think even Nook has affiliate programs now, you know, making sure that that's included in the links that you're going to send out to readers, um, updating the website, your website, updating, if you use uh, books to read, updating all of those links with the multiple retailers, because that's not always automatic. Um, yeah, so it was, it was all of that. A long and then, process, isn't it? Yes. Then figuring yeah. out like, again, how to market to the individual retailers because they're all a little different. They all have strengths and weaknesses, mm -hmm. both in how to reach readers that way and like the frustrations on the author side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, about it, price, mm -hmm. what about pricing? Sorry, Truth. Uh, what about pricing? Did you did you keep it the same, you know, across the board? Have you gone higher on some of the other platforms? Because I know that you, we hear people saying that you can actually price higher on mm -hmm. on the other platforms have you tried that at all well i don't what i didn't want to do was have different prices on different platforms because yep. i didn't want readers to be uh, you know confused and upset by that so but i do tend to price on the higher end for an indie author um, i started when i was in ku i had bumped my prices up to 4.99 and saw an increase in sales not just page yep. reads but sales so then i bumped up to 5.99 mm -hmm. no change so i started out pricing everything at $5.99. But then when I went, um, I started then doing like first in series free. And then now recently I've been experience, experimenting with first in series free, second book in series like $3.99 and then the rest $5.99. So it's more like a, a gradual mm -hmm. increase yeah. for basically to attract new readers who, you know, yeah. I want them to take a chance on me. So I, I don't find, yeah, the readers on the other platforms are not as price sensitive as they are on Amazon. Yeah. And the read through 
is significantly higher, particularly for me on Apple. Yeah. Um, it just feels like they, those readers will just, the read through is re very strong, even from a perma-free. Mm. So I do appreciate that. Yeah. Mm. So I've just gone through the process of doing a perma-free and I asked mm -hmm. for the first in series and one of my series to be free. And I've just realized like literally yesterday that they've only put it free in like the four main English speaking kind of country, like, you know, US, UK, yeah. Canada Amazon. and Australia. And so yeah. I, have you, are you free everywhere or is it the same or what did I do wrong? Explain you mean, it to you're me. You're talking sure. free on Amazon, Trudy, for price yeah. matching. Oh, yeah, yeah, price matching. Sorry, yeah. yes, sorry. Yeah. To be clear, yeah. Just... Um, so it's, it's I don't. Time. Yeah, sorry. It, it, I don't yeah. check it as often as I probably should mm. because I've heard that prices from Amazon can revert back to paid on any country at any time. But mm. when I do the initial request to Amazon, I specifically say in all marketplaces, in all currencies. Mm. Mm. Um, mm. And so far they have followed suit with that. And so as far as I know, my books are, the permafreeze are free on Amazon everywhere. Mm. Um, but like I said, I, I check it once in a while, but not mm. all the time. So I should yeah. probably go in and I, I just did one for a uh, perma free, and I actually listed mm -hmm. all the countries and yeah. gave them the link. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. yeah. And, and it's pretty easy you know, once you've set yeah. up the format. It's pretty easy because you just change the the book um, I, ASIN yeah. in yeah. each one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just one of those yeah. things that's kind of, if you don't know about it mm. and you don't know right. sort of the things You think outs. it's going to be done across the board. Yes. Mm. But sometimes and it you actually right. have to follow up, don't you? Mm. Yeah. 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 Um, particularly important if you're having a book bubble or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, yeah. you want to yeah. make sure. Exactly. You don't yeah. want to get that email, right? If I'm no. saying, oh, no. your book is not free. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. I mean, mm. it was free in all the main sales areas, but it was mm. just, I was just like, mm. it, you know, it's one of those yeah. things where you kind of, if, uh, until I was. Mm. It can be very niggly trying to get mm. your books free sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, um, right. So, that's I, interesting about the five ninety nine, though. I must admit, mm. everything else in the world is going up in price. Uh, we tend to leave yeah, our books exactly. as they are, yeah, yeah. and exactly. you know, I've always been four ninety nine. And mm. and someone said to me the other day, "Why are you not five ninety nine? I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, we'll pay five dollars for a coffee. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I was yeah. like, oh well, that's actually true, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. or, or six and or I seven. Know, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Some authors will price based on the length of the of the book, and mm -hmm. I don't do that because unless if, if it was a very short book like a novella, I would probably price lower. But as mm -hmm. long as it's a complete story, I feel like you're paying for the experience of the story, not necessarily yeah. the word count. I mean, traditional mm -hmm. publishing doesn't do that. You know, it's it's based on the story. So mm -hmm. whether my novel is fifty five thousand words or eighty five thousand. You know, I'm, pro I'm probably going to keep it at the same price. Um, mm. If I were in KU, I might experiment with that a little bit more because you're going to get probably most, especially in paranormal romance, most of your readers are going to be K in KU and not buying it. So you yeah. could experiment a little bit more with that price point just to see. Um, yeah. But for now, I feel like I, I keep it consistent, except for when I'm doing those stepped, you know, promotions. Yeah. And so that's, that's, sorry, go here. Oh, I was just going to say, so that is your word count. Um, across the board, fifty-five to eighty-five. Pretty much. I'm, yeah. I mostly try to come in. I, every book I start, I say this one's going to be sixty k. Usually <laughs> ends up being more, yeah. but it depends on the you know world building and things like yeah. that. But um, yeah, I I usually come. I would say if I had to do an average, it would probably be about sixty-five k yeah. at this point. Okay. Yeah. So, so let's talk a little bit about, so now that you are wide and you're, you're doing, so we know your prices, um, but what else are there, what else do you do that, that you do wide that you never did when you were in KU? And what about the different retailers? What are the different things that you do on the different retailers that help you sell books? So um, with wide, what I do is I make sure that I have all of my retailer links on my website. Uh, because there's nothing worse than trying to, okay, let me back this up for a second. Some of the retailers are not like Amazon, where Amazon is this huge behemoth, but a retailer like Apple, they have a very small dedicated staff that works with authors. And so they will actually, if you try to get a promotion with them, they will go to your website and make sure that you have a link to your Apple book. Mm -hmm. Because if you're applying for promotions and asking them, hey, help, help me promote my book to your readers, but you're not going to bother putting it on your website. You're only putting the Amazon link or you're only putting an Amazon link in your Facebook ads. They're going to be less likely to want to help you. 
So I first make sure that I have all of the links that they all work. <laughs> I check those pretty regularly. Um, when I'm doing any kind of newsletter or promotion or even with Facebook ads, I include all of the links. Um, I do Facebook ads targeting Apple devices. Sometimes when I'm just trying to get um, Apple readers, I will target specifically Apple devices. And then I think Apple books, or it might even still be under iBooks as a targeting option in Facebook. Um, I do things like that with Kobo because they have such a strong presence in Canada. I will do geo ads just to Canada, just to Kobo um, with just the Kobo links. So it's, it's really about thinking about each individual retailer. I also look at all of the books on all of the retailer sites and if I can on the device. So I don't have an Android phone, but I can look at it on iBooks on my iPhone, um, you know, just to see kind of get an idea what the reader experience is like so that if I'm marketing something, I can tell the readers what to expect, especially if I'm trying to get them to try something other than Amazon, like if I want them yeah. to try Kobo Plus. Um, so those are some of the things that I do. Um, Here's another one, if you're doing giveaways in your group or something, don't just default to an Amazon gift card, which is so easy to do, right? But yeah. offer um, you know, gift cards to other retailers or e other e-readers, like a Kobo e-reader, if you're doing a big gift like that. Um, offer things like if you have a direct store, give a gift card to that. If you're giving away free books, um, give them away on your direct store. That helps train readers to, to get used to your direct sales process, if that's something. Um, that you'd like to do, which is definitely my long-term plan. Um, that was a big reason for going wide and a big reason for not suffering with, you know, feeling bad about the initial income dip because I know it's a long game for me. I have a longer strategy in mind. Um, so those are just, it's just a mindset of thinking bigger, thinking wider, thinking not, we're so used to Amazon, but like there's, yeah. there's like a world of readers out there on other platforms. So it's mm. important to know mm. that too. Yeah, mm. so true. It's fascinating. Mm. It's, I like the idea of going to the different platforms. Like, for example, Google Play is one that I'm not mm. very familiar with. And I was playing around with it yesterday, playing around with it yesterday mm. um, and kind of going, wow, this is, you know, like I hadn't really properly been in there and looked at how people got access to the books mm. and stuff. And I think that's yeah. a really, a really mm. good point you made. Um, just getting familiar. Mm. Um, with all the different. Do you use the, a lot of the Kobo promotions, um, you know, Barnes & Noble? I do. You do. You go through them. Okay. Quite hard to get anytime sometimes. <laughs> they are. I've had good luck with Kobo. Um, Barnes & Noble, I have not had good luck with, but they don't like steamy romance in those promos. No. <laughs> so I probably won't ever because my blurbs make it pretty clear that it's going to be steamy. Yeah. Um, so I don't have high expectations for that but I do have you can set coupon codes in Barnes and Noble so I have like a permanent 15% coupon for it's on my website for anybody who you know nook readers that go there they can always get a discount in Google Play you can do things like um, series bundle discounts where yeah. you can have your books mm -hmm. and then if a reader wants to buy all of them they yeah. get a discount that has made me a lot of extra money doing that like yeah because even a new reader might be like well this is such a good deal I'm just going to grab them even if I don't yeah. like them so that's what I mean by every retailer has its own kind of things that yeah. you don't really know about until you start playing around in there and yeah. um, getting to know if you have an opportunity like at a conference or something, getting to know some of the other vendor representatives mm -hmm. because yeah. they want they want to succeed. They want to compete with Amazon. And so a lot of them, most of them are very open to working with authors and you could even suggest promotions and stuff like with Apple. You could get together with some of your friends if you're doing like, for example, a hockey romance thing or something and you can suggest promotions and they're open to it so mm. it's it's all about have, that learning do you have to be sorry do you have to be direct with apple to promote with them or can you go through an aggregator to do that i am not sure because i've always yeah. been direct with apple yeah. i i mm. know that draft to digital offers apple promotions i don't know if they're the kind where you can suggest them through yeah. draft to digital or if it's just a kind where they say hey we're running this promo mm. people can apply right. through draft to digital so i'm not sure about that specifically mm. Okay. Yeah. So mm. I have a question. How do you manage that? So do you have a, a schedule? Do you set, um, uh, like, have you got a, are you a planner girl? Do you, you know, in terms of working through the different retailers and, and sort of, t how do you work it all? Keep all the, all the parts, all the plates all spinning. The yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I always tell myself <laughs> that I, I say I'm a planner, I'm this and that, but 
okay, I'm, I am, I don't know how into astrology people are, but I'm a Virgo, so I am very mm. predisposed. Wendy's a Virgo as well. Um, right. Wendy's not into astrology, but she's such a typical Virgo. So, you know, just okay, so. good. So yeah. you can relate. <laughs> so I, um, I'm like the spreadsheet queen. I have mm -hmm. spreadsheets for everything. Um, they're all beautiful and color coded. And my husband always laughs at me because he's like, are you working on a new spreadsheet? Another one? And I'm like, look at how awesome and beautiful it is. <laughs> yeah. Look yeah. at this sortable color. You know, so I do that kind of thing so that I can keep track of stuff. Um, but I'm not really that great at schedules. Like I, mm -hmm. I prefer to just kind of go go with it and you know like I can meet a deadline but I can't say like oh I'm going to wake up every day at such and such a time and just write out this many words yeah. or this is I, my you yeah. know one hour yeah. for marketing a day and one hour for emails like I, I've tried that so wouldn't you love times. to be like that though <laughs> I would I would oh, and you know I? part of it is like it, it's kind of a blessing because my husband and I run the business together uh, we don't have children so it's we don't have a lot of structure in our day that we have to work around. We don't have other jobs. We don't have kids that we have to, you know, work all of that in. So mm -hmm. it's very easy for us to just work as we feel what we can do that day, what else comes up during the day. Um, you know, because there's also a lot of business administration just with running the corporation, just that Absolutely. kind of stuff, tax planning, accounting, yeah, so all of much. that. Yeah. All so, the fun stuff. Yeah. The fun, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I try to be a little bit organ, like slightly loosely organized. Um, but give myself a lot of flexibility. But I do think you have to have some kind of system of at least keeping track of things. So you know when stuff is done and what else mm. needs to be done. Yeah. Or you need someone to do it for you <laughs> and tell you what to do. <laughs> My problem though as a Virgo is that I don't trust anyone else to do it. <laughs> That's all if you want something to, done right. I have to do it myself. So mm. I'm trying to let go a little bit of that. And I, I would love to find a, a great assistant that I could train to just take on a lot of this, but I haven't had luck with that yet. So we'll mm. see. Mm. I was lucky enough to get my daughter who's like nothing like me. <laughs> she's uber organized, <laughs> spreadsheet queen. So she's the one who mm -hmm. you need to do this. You need to do that. So mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah, she I'm bosses really Wendy around and Wendy just big goes, time. Okay. I mm -hmm. need it. I need it massively. I'm a, yeah. yeah, that would definitely help. <laughs> yeah, I just write all day if I don't have someone telling me what to do. <laughs> she says that, but she's actually very smart. Um, so can, um, well, you mentioned your husband and that you, you run the business together. So can we talk about that for a little while? Like, um, sure. how did that happen? Like, what what made him decide to, want, you know, come in or, or you decide to bring him in? And and what, what do you each do? And how do you avoid the fights and <laughs> <laughs> all of the stuff? <laughs> We avoid the fights because I'm the boss and I just tell him what to do. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we actually met at work. Like this is how we met. It was way back in 1999 mm -hmm, um, in New York City. Right before Lovely. it was Y2K, right? The, the yeah. brink of Y2K. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, we met at work. We were working for a nonprofit and my boss came in one day and, and I was running a program within that um, nonprofit. And she said, okay, we're getting a new webmaster. Yes, this was back in the day when you had to have a webmaster mm -hmm. to make your website. So she said, we're getting a new webmaster and you know, I want him to do our program website first. So I want you to take him out to lunch and get to know him and convince him to do our website. And I was like, sounds a little shady. I'm in. <laughs> so I, <laughs> So and you really convinced him. Say, yeah. So we got our website first, by the way. <laughs> so we're clear. That's how we met. And we got the website. And um, yeah, we fell in love and the whole thing. Oh. So anyway, <laughs> that was so, so, so long ago. So <laughs> after that, um, he started doing freelance work. He was doing web and technology. And I was like, oh, man, I want to work from home, too. Like, we need to figure out something that we can do together. So on and off over the years, we would do different projects together. We would bring each other in on things like he would bring me in as a web content writer on, for some of his clients that he was doing the web development for. Mm -hmm. um, and I would bring him in the technology and web stuff on some of the other stuff that I was working on. And so anyway, when the when the book stuff happened, finally happened, um, it, it was like a natural progression mm. for us, um, particularly once we started going indie. I was like, you know what? I think we both can do this because you can do all of the web and some of the marketing stuff and things like that. And I can do the writing. And that was kind of how it started. Um, now the business has really grown a lot. We have a lot more um, intellectual property. We do audio, we do paperbacks, we do different things. And so 
he really helps me keep track of all of that. He does all mm. of the web stuff, any, any web stuff, um, technology things, um, some of the marketing, he's starting to get into the ad stuff. Um, he helps me edit and proofread when I need to, he proofs my audio. So he basically does like any of that stuff. Uh, he manages a lot of the business financials. So it's, it's a pretty like even split where we're mm. both kind of taking on different specialized things, but then there's a lot that we have to come together on. He helps me with plot um, ideas and things like that. So yeah, I don't know. Like, so we basically, we've always worked Mm. together since we met. And so we just, I think that's amazing. Brilliant. We work really well together. You're still married. (laughs) Still married. Mm. We love spending time together. And so it just, yeah, Mm, I know everyone's like, I could never work with my spouse or my Mm. partner. Oh, that sounds terrible. But I'm like, nope. He's my favorite. I love it. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. I've just brought my husband into in my business and he does the finances. The only problem with that, he's like, what's that? What did you spend there? Yeah. You know. <laughs> like, you don't need to know. Just no, just, just put just it in. Do your job. Put it in your Miscellaneous. <laughs> yeah. 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 So does he, and he doesn't do any other outside contracts or anything? He's full-time on your, on your business? No, no, nope. he's yeah. full-time. We're both just, this is just our business now and yeah. we put everything into it. And nice. it's just amazing because we, when we first started dating, we would joke about like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we could just work from home and ha ha ha. I mean, this yeah. was back before in, mm. internet businesses were really yeah. within the realm of possibility for most yeah. people. Yeah. So it's just, it's just kind of fun that we were able to make oh, cool. that happen together. Yeah. 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 Meant um, to be. You yeah. kind of hear that happening, you know, after yeah. after the big COVID yeah. debacle. Yeah. yeah that, that, that's, yeah. that is happening a lot more, but to have it happen so far in advance yeah. of that, you, you guys were ahead of the times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were on it. So. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just everybody, everybody's different. Every relationship is different. But I think if a couple can work well together and they have different skill sets that they, they can kind of marry up. Um, it could be a really great thing. And even if it's not like a full-time thing, like you could have yeah. a partner that maybe just helps you with, you know, editing or something. And even yeah. that is great because not only um, does it save you money and having to get other staff and stuff, but it's like that person's going to care about the work just like you do versus mm-hmm. an outsider. That's like, they're doing it maybe for a paycheck. Um, yes. And it's like, it's just this kind of thing that you can both do together. And, and they're more invested, really aren't they? Rewarding. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. for sure. That's mm-hmm. actually a really good point. I hadn't thought about that, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Can I can I just touch on some marketing with you a little bit? Um, mm-hmm. so Facebook's your main marketing avenue, or do you do for Amazon, um, Amazon ads or? Yeah, so I do a mix of Facebook ads, uh, Amazon AMS ads. Um, I was doing TikTok for a while, and I had a lot of success with it, but it started the algorithm started changing, and I couldn't quite keep up. And then we actually just moved across the United States, and so we're just settling back in but for a few months that was everything was focused on the move so I, I really dropped the ball with TikTok yeah. that but if I can figure out how to make that work again I'm going to because uh, that was just really great to see just bringing in new readers and even with videos that didn't have to go super viral but just mm. you know 50,000 mm. views you'd see even a huge response yeah. from that if you hit the, the hooks the right way so um, mm. that is another avenue um yeah, I, I don't do a lot of newsletter swaps. I do an occasional. Um, I try to do a book club. That's hard to get, obviously. Um, I'm starting to learn book club cost per click ads. I haven't launched any yet. I'm still trying to figure them out. Quite um, hard. And then okay. I have just, they are, yeah. And then there's just the permafree strategy. Those, in some of the retailers, Google in particular, they kind of sell themselves, which surprised me. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I love that. Um, I recently did the Zo- Zoe Bub. Mm-hmm. Um, a mm. couple of those which have been awesome so just things like that wherever there's an opportunity mm. Kobo promotions the retailers I try to get in on those mm. that's really where I'm yeah you but got, I, what I'd uh, like to do is I'm sorry you go keep going oh I was just going to say when I start getting more into direct sales um, I need to think more about ramping up Facebook ads because I, I hear that that's a one of the best ways because of the retargeting mm. options in Facebook Mm, yeah so, so that was the one thing I was curious about because again I've just mm-hmm. got wide and I've been thinking is there any point doing Amazon ads anymore if you're not mm-hmm. in KU how do you find Amazon ads in terms yeah. of um, being wide yeah I don't find them as effective honestly um, they uh, even with the perma free it's so hard because the top sellers in Amazon are in all of the charts mostly but especially with paranormal and urban fantasy genres 
it's all KU. I mean, it's you, you'll get like the occasional outlier of mm -hmm. either a traditionally published book or an indie that's not um, in KU. But all those top sellers are in KU. And the top sellers are where you're going to see the best um, exposure with Amazon ads. So it, it's very difficult to try to um, go through and find author targets that are effective that are not in KU. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is if you're advertising to KU readers, you know, a lot of times mm -hmm. they're not going to spend the money on your book because they have all these other KU options. They don't need to spend the money to them that it's free. They've already paid for the subscription. So I, I, I am finding it very difficult. Um, I am going to try for this witchy rom-com targeting traditionally published authors because that for some reason that subgenre is not really huge in indie yet. Um, it's mostly still traditional published. So I'm going to see if I can try to target those and see yeah. how that works. But yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, no, that's cool. Um, and do you have a newsletter? I can't. Be, I think you said you did. That you do. Yes, I do have a newsletter, but this is probably my weakest link. Um, mm. I don't have an automation sequence. <laughs> I don't have a welcome sequence. I have a couple of newsletter <laughs> magnets, so <laughs> do do that. I bring them in, and then I just like let them sit, and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I have a new release. I should probably tell my newsletter. So yeah. I haven't been great about it. Um, so you I, don't I send it regularly. It you don't send it. I don't and. I don't, and I want to, I want to send it regularly. I want to be better yeah. with the automations mm -hmm. and I want to put more into it, not just the new release, like a little bit more personality. You know, I don't like to share too much of my personal life with my readers, but like a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. So I feel like I want to just make it a little more fun for them, do more sales and stuff just specifically for the newsletter. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and I also have a, a recently launched a Patreon that was part of my wide strategy. So I do it like a little bit with that. Um, so now I'm trying to like, market to for people to buy the books but also to join the patreon and so it's mm. like a little bit of a different approach yeah, yeah yeah um so so i want to quickly talk about your blurbs and your website um and then we'll talk mm -hmm. about your wide audiobooks um but the the one thing i i love your website and so anyone listening oh, i think you should you. go and look at sarah's website and i and i think the and i don't know if this is maybe just an extension of your personality but i just felt like there was a really lovely that you had the right vibe going on and the right the writing was very like it, i felt like it gave you a really good idea of what the books were going to be like and the um i don't know i just it, it's yeah. even just the bio that i read out before it was just kind of like that witchy kind of um feel it, I just felt like it was a you know um it all fit together really nicely and so is that something you've worked on or is that just something that came naturally because that was all the things that you loved or how did that yeah. work yeah. yeah that came naturally once I started fo again following more of my heart with yeah. what I wanted to write with the paranormal because like I said I read tarot cards I'm witchy I you know I, I'm really into that you can see my little signs back here yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. things that my little nieces gave me because they know too but um I, so once I started doing that I felt like it, the marketing piece and the the presentation piece was so much easier because it was just mm -hmm. an extension of my authentic who I am and what I enjoy mm -hmm. so that made it a lot more fun now I realize like not everybody can do that because you know the whole writing to market thing it's always that conundrum but I, I feel like if you can find you know what you love and what's selling and and find where those two things intersect it makes it a lot easier <laughs> it makes in the long term mm. I feel and yeah. a lot more rewarding um yeah. but you know it depends on your goals but that's so yeah so for the website and and that kind of thing it's it's a natural extension like yeah. even on my patreon I do tarot reading videos and stuff like that because that's just I love reading tarot so I wanted to offer that to my readers a lot of my characters read tarot in my books so it's it's a natural extension in that way yeah yeah, and you say that you don't want to give too much of your personal life to your readers, but I actually felt like uh, reading the website and, and kind of you took, you know, your bio and all the things around it, I felt like I was getting a piece of you as in, yeah. and that was as interesting to me because I was, that's what I was curious about, whether it is actually just a persona you created or whether you felt like it was an extension of you, because it, it really did give me yeah. a sense that I was getting a peek inside your life rather, but without really, well, I'm glad. <laughs> without <laughs> having to, you know, show me everything, hoping, yeah. 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 right so, so yeah that's, did... that's authentic. everything on that site is authentically me it's just mm. not like all of me yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. some readers are very comfortable talking about like you know I'm having a surgery on my toe and da, 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 this kind of thing and my three kids and here's their pictures and yeah. I don't I don't I'm, I'm private in that way but yeah. like as far as like here's me I read tarot I watch vampire diaries I love this kind of stuff that's all me yeah 
yeah and that's it because we do talk about that like the ability to kind of pick and choose what you share with you know and creating you know still creating a connection with your readers so you know yeah listeners are wanting someone yeah I just think you do a good job of that so that's awesome thank you I appreciate that (laughs) okay so so you've just launched um your audiobooks direct so um and we've talked a little bit about direct on the public uh, other podcast before and cheryl is our direct queen um (laughs) but but, um feeling saturation (laughs) but um can you talk about that like why why direct you said that it was part of your whole wide strategy like yeah talk us through a little bit of that yeah how that's going so with, with direct audio, it's, I love it because it's, you know, it's a little bit tedious to set up, but once it's set up, it's automated and you can charge significantly less money to the reader and keep significantly more of the royalty. Mm-hmm. So for example, on an audible title, audible will sell my title, let's say for twenty four ninety nine, mm-hmm. And I might make like a dollar 80 because they're uh-huh. running some random sale yeah. that I don't know about it. Right. Mm-hmm. I can sell that same title for nine ninety nine and make nine dollars in profit yeah so it it allows me to do more audiobooks to fund more audiobooks and to just give more to the readers and it allows them to get the book cheaper and so i i really love that and the readers love it too they're totally on board because they they want to support their favorite authors of course yeah. um course. and actually i recently left audible altogether I don't have any titles on the only titles that I have on audible are the ones that Tantor media did on two of my series, but all of my other independently published titles are, they're not on audible because I got so fed up with the, I started making spreadsheets with all of the royalty statements every month and like crunching the numbers. And I did this whole graph and I was like, wow, every month I put out more content and I make less money on audible because they have so many member sales and so many you know buy three extra credits for a dollar all that stuff and you mm. and who pays for that the author not audible mm. yeah. and they don't let you set your prices and all of that stuff and I was getting so frustrated so finally okay. I was like you know what I'm done so I, I just they let you you can now it used to be that you had to stay on there for seven years or a year I don't remember now you can do it after 90 days so all my oh, wow. 90 days were up Big difference. Mm-hmm. I pulled yeah. them all down so now I have all of my audio on all of the retailers and through um, find a way I distribute to all of them except for Hoopla because Hoopla only paid out like 30 cents a listen and I just that was too low. But mostly all of the other ones I'm on mm-hmm. and then I have the direct sales, which I, I try to encourage readers to go direct because it just it's it's just so much more money and um, mm-hmm. it's cheaper. When you for say direct, do you, do you have a store or are you selling off your website? It's a store through my web. So if it, on my website, when you go to the audiobook section, it'll take you like you, it'll have all the retailers listed. But one of them is like buy direct and save, and that will take you to my PayHip store. PayHip, okay, cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I'm yeah. only doing that for audio right now, but yeah, yeah. Just a silly question: When you say all the retailers for audio, who are the who are all the retailers? I, I'm not got my <laughs> audio. Okay, so oh, I don't know. Um, I'm direct on Kobo. And then through Find Away Voices, I get to Google Play, Nook, um, audiobooks.com, uh, Spotify, Scrib, Downpour. There's there's literally probably 50, I think, mm. 49 mm. or 50. Oh, wow. And that's all that through, through Find Away. Through Find Away. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So basically, my, my thing is I go direct wherever I can. Um, and then to Find Away through everywhere else. Apple Books. I don't know if I said that one yet. Apple mm. Books. Um, Google Play is currently through Findaway, but they the Google Play reps have confirmed that they are working on direct audio abilities very soon. Mm. So I'll be switching to direct with them too. Mm. Okay. So yeah, audio books to you. Only, oh, maybe like 15, 16, 20, something like that. All, all of my Piper books are in audio, but the first two series are with Tantor. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like it's, I don't know, six. Maybe 18. Yeah. I don't know. Do you release that? <laughs> do you release the ebook, the print book, and the audio at the same time? Or do, how significantly later do you release the audio? Yeah. So for a while I was really good and I was doing simultaneous release because <laughs> I found that that just really helped with sales. Because then when you're advertising the ebook, people will see the audio, they'll find yeah. it. Um, although that changed a little bit when I pulled them off of Audible because that, you know, that was a lot of the volume of the sales yeah. that I was getting, just yeah. not the royalties. Um, 
and on principle I just couldn't do it anymore yeah, so yeah, I left yeah. them but yes but for the witch for the one that's the devil made me brew it which is the one that's on my website now that comes out in October later this month um I couldn't schedule the narrator like I wanted to release it before Halloween because it's a witchy you know witchy rom-com mm-hmm. but yeah. that I couldn't wouldn't be able to have it recorded and so the audio won't be ready till the first week of December because I'm doing duet narration on that one yeah. so that I had to coordinate with the two narrators together um so that was as soon as we could do it so yeah. that one's going to be a little bit later but so have you found I think audio? Yeah, yeah. Have you found audio to be worth it then? Like you, even though now you're off Audible, you're definitely making money mm-hmm. off of it, and it's, yeah, okay. Yeah, and all of my audiobooks have earned out, and they're all they all continue to be profitable, and and you know the more popular ones are even the most mm-hmm. profitable, obviously. But mm-hmm. um, yes, I it, it you know it depends on your readership, it depends on your genre, a lot of things, but um, I I can tell you some of the things that have I think really helped me with audio. Um, one of them is obviously using popular narrators, particularly if they're active on social media and have their own built-in fan base, because those fans are so hardcore and they will read pretty much anything. They will listen to anything their favorite narrators produce or, or narrate, even if it's not their typical genre. So yeah. I like, for example, um, I use Shane East a lot for my British characters because he's just the best, I think, for Brits. Um, and he was doing a lot of contemporary rom- romance and I do all paranormal. Well, I brought in a lot of his fans followed him to the paranormal stuff. Mm. And it, for like, I was their first time listening to paranormal audio, but they, because they love him, they were totally into it. And now they're some of my best and most loyal fans. They're my, they were my first patrons for Patreon. Mm-hmm. They're just great. So I think when you have um, lovable narrators, particularly in romance, you, they will bring their fans to you. So that's one way to do it. Um, another thing is I did an advanced listening team, like an ARC team for audio, so that I could have uh, reviews put out and um, right when with release date. And that has been great to, to generate early buzz for that. Um, doing Applying for CHIRP promotions through Findaway. They, that's the other one, CHIRP, um, which is like the book club of audio. So applying mm-hmm. for those promotions is really great too. Um, doing the direct sales again with audio and offering like a giveaway, like, you know, book one in the series is free. It's more likely to get follow on sales. Mm-hmm. Um, now find a way is doing this quarterly marketing thing where you can apply to it. And then they, they kind of present it to all of the retailers and you can just, you just adjust your prices accordingly and whichever retailers want to participate will. And I found that has been amazing for getting new readers. Cause I'll, I'll drop the price like 50% on book one, 25% on book two, and then full price on the others. And that's been great for getting new listeners too. Mm, so okay. things like that. That's yeah. a lot of. So it's just being involved in knowing the, the yeah. things that are going on. Um, yeah. yeah. There, that's awesome. Do you do translations at all? That's another new frontier that I want to start getting into. <laughs> um, that process really intimidates me, though, because I just I want to hire somebody to just manage all of it. I don't want to have to vet translators and vet translations. I've heard too many horror stories, so I would really like to just hire somebody to just manage all of that and and do it for me. And I just haven't been able to research that yet. I'm sure there are people who do that. Um, There's some good places to go on Facebook and German translation sites. And that's where I found mine. Sure. And they're really good. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. So so then the other thing, and I don't think we've talked about it, is your Facebook group, the Sassy Mm -hmm. Witches. Have I got that right? I I was just looking Mm -hmm. at. So, and it's got 2,300 people. So how do you do much in there? Is that a big part of your... Um, marketing strategy yeah and that is I never really looked at it as like a marketing strategy it was more like a fun place for readers to gather but it mm-hmm. does actually it is effective marketing because again those tend to be the more loyal fans yeah. um, so like but there's like a group of them that are very active where whenever I post something they're in there commenting or whatever um, and, and they'll post memes and different things like that but the mm-hmm. thing with the Facebook groups that's really difficult I'm sure as you all know Facebook keeps throttling the reach and so mm-hmm. you know I'll post something like hey new book announcement and it'll get like a hundred you know views out of those mm-hmm. 2300 members or whatever mm-hmm. so it's kind of like it's like an uphill battle to get engagement enough for Facebook mm-hmm. to push it out to the people who wanted to join your group that's why it's so frustrating yeah. um can you so post I inside a group too much. just out of curiosity are they so. no. no so it's not even that they're and trying you to get you to boost them. you just right. so- yeah. So what about the tagging with the um, at everyone? Have you, have you tried that? 
I haven't tried that. I'm afraid yeah. to try that because that oh, me too. Me so much. Me too. <laughs> so like, does, right? It's yeah. like, I don't, you know. I do that, um, <laughs> but I just wonder. But I, know. yeah, I feel like it's so tricky with yeah. with that. I, and what what I'm thinking about doing is um, Patreon is rolling out. It might already be out. Or it's coming soon, where people can join for free. So you can have a free tier where they can just kind of they're still your patrons, but they, it doesn't cost them anything. And I'm thinking of trying to get most of my Facebook group over to there because then at least they will always see the post because they'll get an email about it. Yeah. Um, and if it's interested, if they're interested, they can go look at it. And then they might decide to join Patreon at a paid mm. level at that point. Um, mm. So I'm, I'm going to start experimenting with things like that because I, I like having a place for them to go and to like chat about stuff and just be informal. Sometimes I'll post a little video, just rambling. Sometimes I'll, again, I'll do like a little tarot post or something. And I like that. But it's it's not really worth it if only a few people can see it and it mm. doesn't go anywhere. Mm. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a good yeah. idea actually. Yeah, really mm. good idea. Yeah, yeah. You have to wonder yeah. what Facebook are thinking in terms of throttling the. Anyway, that's yeah. whole nother who knows? <laughs> yeah, you know, I have a lot of feelings about yes. that. But yeah, 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 I think we all I do. Think all, all authors do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Probably not yeah. just authors. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, so. What are your plans going forward? Like you've got, it sounds like there's a, a long-term plan that's happening here. You've gone wide, you've got direct. Is that, you know, what's, mm -hmm. can you talk us through that? Like where's it, where's it all sure. going? So my biggest plan for next year is um, we want to get the direct sales like really ramped up. So not just with audio, but with, with all of the eBooks, with special editions, box sets, all different things. And, and really just, build that up and build it up with readers and then work on it, bringing in new readers to that because um, th that's like you're kind of unlimited is not just within the Amazon ecosystem anymore. So I really want to try to focus on that for next year and then just keep all of the wide retailers going, keep doing the promos that I can do, but put most of my energy into building up the direct store. So that mm -hmm. is the main thing um, in terms of book releases. I have the the new series that I'm working on, which is the rom-coms, the witchy rom-coms. And then those um, will probably be pretty spaced out. They're a standalone series of standalones, connected standalones, I guess. So it's not like I'm going to be leaving readers with big cliffhangers or anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, because I'm also working, believe it or not, on another proposal to submit for potentially for traditional publishing. <gasps> um, oh. Yeah, so like a romantic fantasy, new adult sort of upper YA kind of proposal however um i'm going to be so picky about the contract this time around that i'm not yeah, sure any well, publisher right. will want to work with me yeah but the great thing will be like this time it'll be the kind of story that if if the publishers don't want it i could easily indie publish it and yeah. so it won't yeah. be like my yeah. last frankenstein project that didn't go anywhere yeah. so i'm also going to be focusing on that um, i've been experimenting a bit with vela kindle vela and radish with serials not having as much luck there and traction i think because my writing style doesn't lend itself to that. I'm a rambler when I talk. I'm a rambler when I write. So I don't have like that punchy, quick yeah. style mm. that seems to be working mm. well with serials. So yeah. I'm going to try a little bit more, maybe a different story, but then I, I don't know that I'm going to invest a lot of time and energy mm -hmm. into that. I don't enjoy did, it as much. Did you write specifically for Radish and Vela or did you um, put up your current, you know, your books you already have chapter by chapter? Mm. I put up the current ones on Radish. Uh, Vela mm -hmm. doesn't allow you to put up previously published content. Okay. Um, so I had a new one that I was um, working on for Vela. It's a like a werewolf, you know, paranormal werewolf series, but it's not, that one's just, I don't know. It's just not hooking in the readers. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I just don't, I don't think my style is suited for that. Uh, yeah. So we'll see. Okay. I use it on my Patreon too. So my patrons have that. Um, they also, I have an audio tier. And so I'm actually, I have those episodes recorded in audio. Um, mm. So they, mm. they do get the audio episodes too, which has been actually really fun. And I haven't seen a lot of authors doing that yet. And I think that will become more popular, like being yeah. able to get like those little bits in audio and not have to wait for a whole, you know, a whole book. So yeah. I plan to keep mm. trying to do that if I can. We'll see. Yeah. You sound incredibly busy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think mean, what do you do? I lie down. <laughs> I feel like that every yeah. night. Oh, I have to go have a lie down right now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I don't do all of those things every day, of course, but I, mm. I yeah, sometimes it's hard to prioritize. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I was. <laughs> and so how do you fit in your actual writing amongst all the, the expansion of that. the business as it were? <laughs> 
Yeah, that's hard. I actually don't write as much as I would like to be writing. Um, I spend a lot of time. I, I have one of those brains that like, I love the marketing and the analysis stuff. And I love the creative writing, but I, I'm getting too mired in the minutia of the marketing and business. And I'm not writing as much as I want to. So I, I need to like figure that out. That's where maybe I'm hoping I can offload some things to an assistant if I could find a good mm -hmm. one. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's challenging. It's really challenging. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's but there's just so much you could be doing on top of what you're doing, yeah. you know, like all yeah. the time yeah. I'm like, oh, well, I need to do that. And, you know, and I've got an assistant and mm -hmm. I've got my husband now. And it's like, you think I would be bang on, but no, there's still right. a whole lot more. <laughs> yeah. yeah, The work expands to fill. Yeah. So if you yeah. have yeah. an exactly. more, you know. Mm. So yeah. true. Yeah. 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 But yeah. you know what? It's like, I love it so much. Yeah. I love writing. I love working for myself. I love working with my husband and having our own business and having all this freedom mm. and the financial freedom it's it's granted us. Like I wouldn't trade it for the world. Yeah. <laughs> so we mind yeah, about it. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. But we it's get also, to do what we love. And it's mm. also the yeah. new opportunities. Like direct sales wasn't something we would have considered five years ago. So, right. you know, it's mm. it's it's in an expanding world, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. So it comes mm. with the benefits and the and the mm and the tasks yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 that's awesome so good so, yeah so the, we're kind of nearing the end of our time together on this podcast but I just wondered if, if is there a, any piece of advice or any kind of inspirational mm -hmm. <laughs> nugget of gold that you want to yeah. give to our, our listeners just to kind of send them on their way sure I love giving out nuggets of gold yeah <laughs> um, you know I think um a couple of things. One is to not be afraid to take risks. Um, that doesn't mean everyone's in a position to take, for example, a huge financial risk, like quitting a job and hoping mm -hmm. that it works out. Like you have to have some kind of a plan, but don't be afraid to take chances, whether it's, you know, pivoting genres, going wide, um, experimenting with direct or audio. But I think, um, see, with advice, like there's a lot of things I wish I had done differently, but at the same time, if I hadn't screwed up in the way that I screwed up, it's yeah. that's kind of like indie author university. Yeah, it's like you it go is. and you make these mistakes and you learn from mm -hmm. them and then you figure out a better way. But I think it, it would help if you know your why. You know, why are you doing this? Are you doing this just because you want to quit your day job and have financial freedom? Great. Are you doing this because you just love to write and you want the world to hear your stories and you don't care so much about the money? Great. Are you wanting to combine those two things? Um, are you following your, you know, there's different strategies um, depending yeah. on what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if you can get in touch with those kind of things that really, what's the thing that's going to get you to sit down and put your butt in the chair every day and either write the words or do the marketing or take the Facebook ads course or whatever it is, figure that out for yourself or you're going to be floundering because you won't feel a connection to the work. Even if yeah. it is just frankly, I want to make money. What can mm -hmm. I write to trend? Mm -hmm. I'm going to you know, get this out there. That's a viable strategy. And a lot of people have been very successful at that. Um, mm. But figure out what it is for you and find a way to make it happen. And don't let anybody tell you that you can't because there are so mm. many opportunities and so many ways to do it mm. and to fail at it and to do it better the next time too. So, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much. That's brilliant yeah, advice. Brilliant. Very Thank inspirational. Thank you. I feel like standing up and giving you an ovation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So if someone wants to uh, find you, find your books, get, connect with you, where, where's the best place to go? Um, you can just go to sarahpiperbooks.com and everything else is linked from there. So mm, sarahpiperbooks.com, place awesome. to be. Nice and easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and Shah, where can we be found? So all our previous podcasts are on your podcast app if you're listening to this. We're at spygirlspodcast.com. Um, on for our website and we're on youtube at spargirls podcast if you are listening to this and you'd like to share a little review on the particular app that you're listening on we would really appreciate that awesome. so thank, thank you, you so, so much, much. Yeah. and thank you to everyone thank for listening you. to another um thank you sarah <laughs> sorry i should have thanked you first um and thank you to all of our listeners for listening to another episode of the spargirls podcast we'll be back again next week but for now farewell well bye bye, bye.